We put out a video a little while ago explaining how Iroh gives you user agency. And more than a few comments on that video came back with the incredibly legitimate question of, that's great, but what is Iroh? So to answer that in a sentence, Iroh is peer-to-peer -peer that works. That's it. Seriously. Iroh is a library. It works natively on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. With Iroh, you get a new superpower that you can bake directly into your app and build upon. Any device that you want to talk to gets a node identifier. From any other device, you plug in that identifier, hit dial, and if the device is online, you'll get an end-to-end -end encrypted connection. From there, you get to do, well, anything you'd want to do with a connection between two devices. If the connection can't be direct because, well, networking is hard sometimes, it'll fall back to talking through a relay. If you switch Wi-Fi networks midway, it'll follow along. If you're on the same local network, devices can discover each other without even having a wide area network or internet connection. All of this that we're describing is open source and built on top of open standards. Once you have peer-to-peer -peer that actually works, the fun of scaling can really start because direct connections scale in ways that just aren't possible by any other means. We've seen networks built with IRO that include millions of devices worldwide streaming incredible amounts of data with service costs summing in under $1,000 a month. And I know what you're thinking. Sometimes when you hear the words peer-to-peer, -peer, ideas like BitTorrent tend to follow closely after. And while we'd love to see someone write a BitTorrent implementation on top of Iroh, that's not strictly what this is. With Iroh, we're focused more on user agency than on network topologies. Because for most of its history, peer-to-peer -peer has been a bit of an either-or proposal. Either it's cloud-based or it's peer-to-peer, -peer. either it's Spotify or it's Napster, either it's centralized and it totally works or it's peer-to-peer -peer and it maybe works. Iroh is a both and. It both works, and it's totally okay to pluralize it with existing stuff. Focusing on improving the status quo gives us permission to take an additive approach. What do you do when no peers are online? Use the cloud. Use multiple clouds. Use users' existing Dropbox accounts. Why not? Let's make things better. At the same time, what do you do when there's a computer sitting open on your desk with a file that you need on it? For the love of latency and all that is right in the world, you dial the device that is sitting on your desk. The point is, there's a time and a place for both. What's been missing is a reliable peer-to-peer -peer layer that just gets out of the way. All of this should just work automatically in the background and based on the needs and values of the application you're embedding Iroh within. We've built that and we really can't wait for you to try it. When building on Iroh, there's no need to start from scratch though. Iroh has a growing set of protocols for file transfer, message broadcasting, and state sync that you can pull off the shelf and compose together as you need. And we think that direct connections are a direct path to higher user agency. After all, what better way to take control back from servers than to turn the device in your hand into one? Now, this is all gonna take a while to unpack. We need to do a deep dive on how these connections work, talking about endpoints, relays, protocols, routers. We need to talk about our decision to write everything in Rust based entirely on Hacker News Point's vanity. We need to show examples of how this all works in real production apps. All of that in due time. But at least now you know what Iroh is. It's peer-to-peer -peer that works. And with that, we'll see you on the internet. <laughs>